Who was the scariest person you've ever met posted one day ago? My old boss, I swear he was like a robot or something. If he wanted to have a meeting with you, he would come up to you with a wide grin and say, can we have a little chat in my office? Nothing serious. His voice would always sound friendly, but there was absolutely nothing behind the eyes and no actual emotion in his voice, just pretense. This faux friendly demeanor would continue throughout the meeting and you could tell that it was covering up for seething anger over whatever tiny fuck up you happened to have made. I hated even seeing him and I was always excited for the two days of my week where he worked on a different site. I worked in a behavioral management unit in a maximum security prison for a couple of years. It's a unit that houses borderline personality cases, sociopaths, psychopaths, etc. Basically, a small unit to house the most disruptive inmates in the DOC. We had an inmate who was in prison for burning down a building with a bunch of people in it due to selling his girlfriend some bad drugs. He killed at least one of them, I don't remember the particulars. This inmate was usually polite, courteous, hardworking, everything you'd want from an inmate. Hell, we'd watch Jeopardy most nights and I would be blown away by his ability to answer a massive majority of the answers correctly. Then, suddenly he wouldn't be okay. The most minor perceived slight or minor transgression would change him. He would shut down and become incredibly violent and he was so strong. He looked forward to the violence kind of like captured in the Bronson movie. It happened intermittently, but when it did, he was a force to be reckoned with. We never had it out, but I always was aware that when I was speaking to him, it wasn't like I was having a normal conversation. It was like he had programmed responses that were designed to be exactly what I wanted to hear. Then, there are the eyes. You hear the saying often inside the walls, nothing behind the eyes. He was the only one I ever really felt that. His glare felt dangerous, and I can't really compare it to anything I've ever experienced before or since. He made it through the program eventually. The carrot that they dangled was a choice of what prison they would like to transfer to. He chose one that had a particular staff member that crossed him too many times years and years back. He was going there to kill him. He waited years for the opportunity. Luckily, he slipped up and someone caught on before he could make it there. Without a doubt, the most dangerous person I've ever met. There was no doubt in my mind that if he had the opportunity and he felt like he needed to, he wouldn't hesitate to kill me. I'm so glad he'll never see the streets again. A friend of my brother's who cornered me in the kitchen in the middle of the night when we all were hanging out at my sister's place and everyone else was asleep. I was trying to politely slide around him to get away, but he kept outmaneuvering me. It was just mildly irritating at first. I was tired and wanted to go to bed until he finally stood blatantly in the middle of the door and said something to the effect of, God, you're so uncomfortable. You keep messing with your hair. You can't even make eye contact with me. Irrational turned immediately to fear because he went from social idiot who can't take a hint to predator who knows exactly what he's doing in a snap. He held that position for just a few seconds, but it felt like hours until he finally let me go. I had planned on sleeping on the living room floor. The creep was in the guest bedroom and my brother had passed out on the living room couch, but I was so freaked out. I went and crawled in bed with my sister. I didn't sleep that night. I met Dan Severin at a small Detroit wrestling show once. I wasn't really into the wrestling, so I wandered over to his table to chat with him. I think I asked one or two questions, and he went on for 20 to 30 minutes. He was incredibly kind to talk to me, but the stuff he said was terrifying. He described how he could have easily killed everyone in the ring in horrific detail. I don't know I have ever met someone I was so positive could end my life immediately. I was overseas and had just been smoking weed in a room I had rented in town when another renter had a chat with me on the porch. Turned out he was a cop, but not interested in small fish like me, but he had smelled the weed. Then he takes out some Polaroids of people and he had shot in the line of duty. He had a pocket full, dead bodies, blood, his own little trophy collection. Anyway, managed to stay cool with him and was more careful about my smoking. An extremely notorious gang member. I wondered why bikies had started hanging around the apartments I lived in. Then one day I got in the elevator and saw him with this massive dude who was obviously his personal protection that day. Thought to myself, isn't that the dude I've seen in the media? Oh fuck it is. We talked about dogs until I got off on my floor. Good guy to talk pets with, but I always checked to make sure no one looked like they were hanging around to do a drive-by shooting before I walked into the building after that. 
my high school English teacher. I suppose he was the over-friendly type of teacher. He was friends with all his students on Facebook and Instagram. He would always see your stories, pictures, and compliment you. But it always felt as if he was too friendly and too touchy-feely. It finally blew up when lots of female students made an anonymous page sharing tons of screenshots of him texting and sexually harassing them. Some even shared about how he would inappropriately touch them, but they were all too afraid to report him because they thought no one would believe them. He was a very nice teacher after all. I just can't believe that he was a pedophile. He had a daughter close in age to those that he harassed. It is always making me scared when you find that a person you made frequent contact with is that creepy. Worked as an EMT for four years. I didn't quit, now I'm a paramedic. My partner and I were sent to an extremely sketchy hotel to pick up a patient for PD. Basically, this guy had been arrested for something, was now swearing up and down that he had chest pain to waste the time of as many people as possible. An ambulance crew had to be dispatched to take him to the hospital in restraints. An officer had to sit with him there until he was cleared, etc. When we arrived, he was crying loudly, sitting on the sidewalk between two cops. I took exactly one look at him and I was terrified. I could feel my heart rate jump and my hands start to shake. My larger male partner said he'd sit in the back with him. So this guy cries the whole time we put him on the gurney and restrain him. If you're arrested or a danger to us, you get soft restraints, tying your wrists and ankles to the gurney. He sobs loudly, talking about how much his chest hurts, how he didn't even do anything. My partner at the time, being better than the rest of us, was polite, professional, and kind. The moment the cops were out of sight, then he was shut in the back of the ambulance for the ride to the hospital, it was like a switch flipped. His face was utterly, perfectly neutral. He stopped making any noise at all. I will never forget the way he looked at my partner. I've read a lot of books talking about a calculating gaze, but I've never seen one before. So a couple of weeks later, we found out why he was being arrested. He had flung bleach into the eyes of a cashier for disrespecting him. She was now permanently blind. If you're scared of someone for no reason, you're probably not scared of them for no reason. I clerked for a criminal trial judge for a few years after law school. I've met a bunch of murderers and the like, including one who executed a man for reporting his counterfeiting scheme to the police and a woman who killed her child. Anyway, the scariest person I ever met was at my first attorney job at a firm that specializes in representing homeowners associations with debt collection. One associate attorney constantly got excited when he talked about getting judgments against people who didn't pay their HOA fees and putting liens on their properties, effectively making sure their financial hardships will last for years. Unlike the murderers I met, he had no soul in his eyes. I knew a guy in college who would befriend attractive single women, but only one at a time. He'd then make it his mission to become their best friend. While he was with them, he'd be super kind and loving, always flirty but never crossing the line, to the point where he seemed to intentionally get them wanting to date him without ever asking them out. While he was with his guy friends, however, or women he didn't find attractive, he'd openly talk about his fantasies of torturing and murdering people, particularly women. On two separate occasions, I remember a group of us approaching the women he was currently hanging out with and asking her to be careful. One just brushed us off and told us we were being ridiculous but the other actually became furious that we would mischaracterize him like that. I'll never forget her saying, we spend all night cuddling and talking. I know him better than anyone and he would never say that. Then the next day, there he'd be, joking about how funny it would be to push a woman down the stairs and watch her head split open on the pavement. Eventually he stopped hanging out with us, I assumed because he caught on that we were blowing up his game. As far as I know, he never actually did harm to any of these women, but it was terrifying how he seemed to get off on knowing that he could. He wasn't scary at the time, but there was an old man at a retirement home I worked at who killed a ton of people in the war. He had some form of dementia, I think, certainly some mental aging related issues going on, whatever label, but most of the time he was calm and quiet, and you would see him do his move slowly up and down the hall in his walker, but dude had to be six foot six and was just a huge man. But every once in a while, he'd just start telling people about the war and go into gross detail about the things he did and saw. I can only imagine if he had been a younger man, I'd have shit myself whenever he came near me after that. I don't know his name and only just began to have these memories not be repressed, but my uncle was part of the cult, the Family International, when I was under seven years old. 
Their propaganda video is on YouTube, but yeah, said uncle was trusted with me as a babysitter for hours to days at a time since both my parents worked long shifts. Mom was a respiratory therapist in a hospital and worked at a long-term vent facility for people in comas on the weekend. I remember a bright multicolored room and a knock at the door. My uncle answers the door and a man with a large colorful parrot type bird on his shoulder walks in. In the memory, I'm so terrified of this man that I'm crying and trying to hide. The cult was known for pedophilia and disturbing educational pamphlets to children of cult members that taught them how to do sexual things and try to brainwash them into thinking that it was what good children did, and if they didn't do it, then God didn't love them. I don't remember much before, but what I do remember isn't something I'd say here if you catch my drift. My dad nor mom knew because I couldn't articulate it at that age, and this was back before the real push in the mid-90s to teach children that if someone touched them like that, it's wrong. Parrot Man was pretty high up in the cult. I was my uncle's present for Parrot Man. It only stopped because my dad got home early and walked in on me watching the very same propaganda that's on YouTube. It was on VHS or Beta at the time. I haven't looked into people known to be in that cult because even though I want to know what happened to me, I'm still scared of Parrot Man to the point that a potential picture of him is too much for me at the moment. Long ago, in a small Eastern European country that shall remain nameless, I was out to eat at a fancy restaurant with some locals when they suddenly went very silent as a small, well-dressed man sat down at our table without invitation. He proceeded to politely ask me about America in broken English. It wasn't until we left the restaurant that one of the locals quietly said he was one of the top mob bosses in the country, a murderer among other things. I got rear-ended outside New York City in a brand new car in busy rush hour traffic in 1995 or so. I had recently been in a hit and run, so the first thing I did was look in the rear view and write down the plate number. It was either a black caddy or a town car. The passenger was an older man wearing sunglasses, wearing a fedora and smoking a cigar. The driver was a huge man who could have been a linebacker. As I was writing down the color, make and model of his car, the driver knocked on my window. I got out. He seemed annoyed. No damage to my car, little to his. He looked at me and said, we're all okay here, right? I thought better to go along with that. I said we should probably file a police report and exchange information. He said no, we're okay. Normally I would have insisted, but I had a pretty good idea of what type I was dealing with. He said, okay, all set then. And I said okay and went back to my car and he said, wait. I almost pissed my pants. I turned around and he grabbed my right hand, shook it, looked right into my eyes and said, may we never meet again. I went back into my car and drove off as fast as I could and kept checking my rear view every so often for the car. Never saw it again, but shook for a while on my way to drive to my destination. One New Year's morning, at 1.30 or so, I was very drunk in a Chinese restaurant's bar. Having to go pee, I headed to the bathroom where I found the door was jammed. Now, this was my favorite shitty dive bar in town, so I knew for a fact the doors didn't lock, and it wasn't one of those solo dumpers, so I pushed harder, started to budge a bit, so I pushed and the door flew open and I stumbled in past a one-eyed guy in a purple suit and into the stall where I urinated loudly. As I finished and was washing my hands, I could feel this guy staring daggers into me. I'm drunk and indestructible, so I didn't really pay him any mind, but it's really weird that this guy is staring at me washing my hands. I dry my hands and get ready to leave when I hear a click, where I look back at the guy and he's got a knife out points the knife to the counter where me, being oblivious, even though I was just washing my hands there, had a white powder broke into lines. I laugh. He tells me I didn't see shit. My friend, the bartender, later told me he was a pimp, headed back to Las Vegas, and got stuck in town. Dude was fucking cutthroat. My aunt's second husband was a real piece of work. When we met him, I was a teenager, and I remember him staring at my bare legs and shorts. He'd follow me and my teenage cousins around the family gatherings and just sort of stare. He and my aunt would get into really bizarre fights. One was about wanting to put a new onesie on her grandchild before we all went to a Chinese restaurant. He jumped into our SUV and told us to just leave them behind, that my aunt hadn't earned the right to Chinese food. He put his hand on my knee and I was like, nope, get out of our car. My father and I both got weird vibes off of the guy. Cut to a year or two later, they'd gotten married and she called, saying they were divorcing. He was taking these weekend trips just over the border in Mexico, we lived in California, and she noticed weird charges on her credit card. 
Turns out he was paying rent on an apartment for his 16-year-old girlfriend. They said girlfriend, I say victim. He also was embezzling a bunch of money from the company he worked for. He put a down payment on a house when they got married, and then he said he was paying the bills even though he never did. He just suddenly left when she found out about the Mexico trips, and then she discovered he'd put the house in her name alone, so she was on the hook for these bills she thought were being paid. Apparently, the cops were after him, and they eventually tracked him down. 